Geometric sequences. We are learning about a different kind of sequence that we've looked at previously. Uh, before today, we looked at arithmetic sequences, right, where you're adding or subtracting to get to the next term. Today, we're talking about geometric sequences, all right? And let me kind of show you an example before we start talking about the specifics here. So this right here is an example of a geometric sequence. Now, it's we're clearly not just adding, right, because that would be plus... 12 and then we would add 30 and then we would add what is that 75 right so it's not multiplying by 12 so what we do is if we can sorry adding by 12 what we do is we see if okay well maybe we're multiplying by something and what we do is we we compare the numbers that we've been given for instance I'm gonna try dividing 20 by 8 right I'm gonna see what I get if I divide 20 by 8 I get 2.5, which means that to get from 8 to 20, I would have to multiply by 2.5. Let's see if it holds. What about 20 times 2.5? Does that give me 50? And it does. All right, so we found our pattern. We're multiplying to get from one term to the next, so times 2.5. Multiplying from one term to the next makes this a geometric sequence. Okay, and this is important, you guys. A geometric sequence e is an exponential function, right? That's why it's in this unit. So an exponential function. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the formula here. We've got a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Let's just talk about each of these parts. a sub 1 is still our initial amount. R is our rate. For example, in, in uh, the example I just did, two and a half would be R, right? Because we were multiplying by two and a half. And then the N minus one just stays where it is. Well, let me show you how this works. So if we're going to write an equation to represent the nth term, okay, I'm looking here. But I'm going to say A sub N, remember that's just notation. N means the term I want to find, which right now I'm just looking for the formula. So A sub N is equal to A sub one. Remember the initial term, the first term. So in this case, that's just 8. All right, so 8 goes first times r, which was 2.5. You know what, I'm going to use parentheses because we're used to that. 2.5. And I'm going to say to the power of n minus, <laughs> n minus 1. Okay, and that's my formula. And all I did was I plugged in 8 and 2.5 to my formula. All right, what is the eighth term? Well, this is pretty simple. If I'm looking for the eighth term, that means I'm going to plug in the number eight for n. So I'm going to use my formula. I just wrote my equation. I just wrote, I'm going to say a sub eight. Remember, don't do anything with this. It's just notation. Is equal to eight, because that was already, already what we had, times 2.5 to the power of n minus one. Well, n right now is eight minus one. All right, so really we've got eight times 2.5 to the power of seven. And to answer this, all we gotta do is type in our calculator. So we've got eight parentheses, 2.5 to the power of seven, all right? Eight minus one is seven. And it would help if I typed this incorrectly. Hang on. Here we go. All right, and we get 4882.81. Four eight eight two point eight one. All right, so that is our eighth term. Let's do another example, and I think we're gonna like this one better. It's just a little easier to see here. So here is our pattern, and I think you guys can tell just by looking. We're multiplying times two, right? Ten times two is twenty. Twenty times two is forty. So if I'm gonna write the equation to represent the nth term, we have a sub n is equal to a sub one. Right, the first term goes first, so 5, and then we've got our so whatever's in there, and then to the power of n minus 1. And in this case, we're going to use a 2 since we're multiplying by 2s. So there is my equation. Right, the fourth, sorry, find the 14th term of the sequence. So we're looking for a sub 14. This literally means the 14th term. All right, and we've got 5 times 2 to the power of 14 minus 1. Right, we plugged in the 14 for n. So really, I want 5 times 2 to the power of 13, 
and let's see what that gives me. It's going to be a large number, I do believe. All right, we've got 5 times 2 to the power of 13, which is 40,960. There we go. All right, flip it over to the back side. It's just more of the same, you guys. Just, we've just got more examples. Okay, let's go ahead and let's look at this next one. How do I get from 6 to ne sorry, <clears throat> negative 6 to negative 12? We multiply times positive 2. Remember, if I divide those, right, divide negative 12 by negative 6, I get that positive 2. So don't write a negative even though you're seeing negatives, right? Negative 12 times 2 is negative 24. Negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 48. All right, so write an equation to represent the nth term. Well, we're going to have a sub n. We're going to have our first term in the front, so negative 6. We're multiplying by 2, so 2 goes in parentheses to the power of n minus 1. Okay, find the ninth term, so we're plugging in a 9 for n. All we got to do is put 9 minus 1 up here, which gives us negative 6 times 2 to the power of 8. And that's going to give us, let's see here, negative 6 times 2 to the power of 8. Okay, and we get negative 1536. Okay, let's see. Find the next two terms of the geometric sequence. Oh, I didn't even follow directions here. Find the next three terms. So we would just be keep multiplying times 2 in that previous example, right? So negative 48 times 2 is going to be negative 96. And then we would get negative 192. And then we would get negative 384. Okay, and so in this one they want to find the next two terms. So what's going on here in the first place? How do I get from 81 to 243? You know what, I'm not sure. Let me just check here. What is 243 divided by 81? I think it's 3, but let's double check. 243 divided by 81. Yeah, we're getting a 3, which means that to get from one term to the next, I'm multiplying times 3. So let's do 243, what do we get? Yep, we get 729, so 729 times 3 is 2187. And then times 3, it's going to be a rather large number here, 6561. Okay, kind of bubble this over here. All right, so... Write an equation to represent the nth term. Well, that is just going to be a sub n is equal to my first term, which is 81, multiplying by 3's to the power of n minus 1. Now, what do they want me to find? They want me to find the 11th term. So a sub 11 is equal to 81 times 3 to the power of 11 minus 1. So really, we're doing 3 to the power of 10, which is, let's see here, 81 times 3 to the power of 10, and we get 4782969, 4782969, so 4,782,969. All right, I'm going to kind of skip this whole find the next two terms thing, because I think that's just kind of making this video longer and we don't need it. All right, 16 to 24. There's not a nice way to multiply a 16 and get a 24, so let's just quickly figure out what we have to be multiplying by here. So 24, 24 over 16, what do I get? What am I multiplying by? Let's see here. 24 divided by 16, and I'm getting 1.5. So 1.5. All right. So to get from 16 to 24, we multiply times 1.5. Let's make sure 24 times 1.5 is 36. And it is. We're good. All right, so times 1.5. So to find more terms, I would just keep multiplying by 1.5. So the equation represent the nth term is going to be a sub n. First term goes in the front, so 16. We're multiplying by 1.5. That goes in parentheses to the power of n minus 1. 
All right, so find the 12th term of this sequence. So a sub 12 means we're plugging in 12 for n. So really, in order to find this, I'm gonna do 16 times 1.5 to the power of 11, which, let's see what that gives me, 16 times 1.5 to the power of 11. All right, and I get a decimal, and that's okay. I get 1383.96. All right, two more. Here we go. Find the next three terms of the geometric sequence. All right, I don't know how to get from 162 to 108. All right, but I know I divide this number by this number, even though that 108 is smaller. All right, so what's that going to give me here? 108 divided by 162. Let's see. Okay, I get 0.6 repeating. So I know that that's a fraction of two thirds, and I like that better. So I'm going to use two thirds. So it looks like I'm multiplying times two thirds. Well, that makes sense, right? If I multiply by a number smaller than one, it results in a smaller number. So multiplying times two thirds. Let's double check that. What's 108 times two thirds? Yeah, it gives me 72, so I'm multiplying by 2 thirds. That's a good hint, you guys. If you're multiplying, if you've got a geometric sequence where your numbers are getting smaller, you're multiplying by a fraction. So my equation represent the nth term is going to be a sub n is equal to my first term, 162. 2 thirds is in parentheses to the power of n minus 1. All right, if I want to find the 10th term, right, a sub 10 just means I'm plugging in a 10 for n. So 10 minus 1, okay, and this is really going to be 162 times 2 thirds to the power of 9. And let's see what he gets. You get 162 times 2 thirds to the power of 9. And I get a very small number. I get 4.21. Let's go ahead and look at the last problem, problem five, and I'm going to change this example a little bit if you guys would do this with me. I'm going to put a negative on the one and I'm going to put a negative on the 16 because I want you to see this in an example. How do I multiply and start with a negative one and then get a positive four? Negative one times what is positive four? Okay, you have to multiply times a negative four. Right? Times a negative 4. Negative 1 times a negative 4 will give me that positive 4. So what's 4 times negative 4? Yeah, I get a negative 16. Do you see I have a negative and then a positive and then a negative? Okay. That is the pattern that you guys are going to start seeing. If, you're, if your um, R value is negative, your signs will alternate. And that's kind of why I wanted to show you this example. So if we're going to write an equation for the nth term, we're going to say a sub n is equal to my first term, negative 1, and then in parentheses my rate that I'm multiplying by, which is negative 4, and then to the power of n minus 1. And then finally they want me to find the 16th term, which means I'm just plugging in a 16. So 16 minus 1, which is really negative 1 times negative 4 to the power of 15. And let's see what I get. Negative 1 times negative 4 to the power of 15. And I get, oh my goodness, positive 10737, 41824. Okay. It's a large number and it's positive. That's okay. It could have been positive or negative just depending on what place in the pattern it fell. All right, the most important thing today to understand is that this formula is pretty simple to use, right? But you will not be given this formula when you test for star. So try and remember the whole n minus 1 thing. It's really the only way this looks different from a regular exponential formula.